Hey, menopause weight loss group. It's Gregor's just wanted to get into this live masterclass so we can talk about how to get rid of the whole emotional eating thing, right? How are we gonna how are we gonna fix that and end this problem? So before we start, I'm just gonna tag some of the ladies who said they wanted to watch this and make sure that they've got access. So I'm just gonna tag them in. So I think this is an important topic. So if you're watching live, um, just drop a, a hashtag and let me know. Right. I'm just going to tag a few people. Cool. All right, let's get this started. So um, if you watch this on the replay, then just drop a replay comment. If you watch this live, then hit me with a live comment. Right. So I appreciate it's half term and people are away and people are um, busy doing stuff. But let me get the intros out of the way. So I'm Greg. Um, I'm a nutrition coach, lifestyle coach, ex-personal trainer who helps professional women who are menopausal, who have struggled with their weight, lose weight, right? And without all the fad diets and all that stuff. So if you're watching this, say hi, say hello, and um, let's go. And... One of the things that I think is really important is to set the scene at the beginning of how you lose weight, right? It's emotional eating is probably the big thing that holds a lot of you ladies back, right? And I hear this a lot of the time. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm an emotional eater. Um, and I, that's the reason why I can't lose weight, okay? I hear it so many times. And if that's you and you've said that in your head, just comment me so I know that that's happened, right? So... We always say, oh yeah, it's me, and that's why I can't lose weight. And I'm going to get you to do a little exercise that's going to challenge that and challenge that thinking. You'll understand how I get results for my clients. So, if you're watching, just say hey, just comment hey so I know. Right, so here's the thing, and this is the real crux of it. Emotional eating is actually holding most of you back. And when I say that, the reason it's holding you back is because you've already labelled yourself an emotional eater. So you can imagine, hey Kate, uh, Kathy even, sorry, um, you've, you've already labelled yourself an emotional eater. You've already got yourself in a little box that says, hey Rich, I'm an emotional eater. You so it's, it's like you've self-conditioned yourself to be an emotional eater. And when I work with clients, what often happens is this. Um, when they first work with me, one of the first things we do is we do a food journal, right? And we'll look at the mood that's going on, but also what's happened in their day, right? And then you start to see this pattern emerge, okay? And the pattern is this, it's really, really simple, really, really simple. The pattern isn't that they're an emotional eater. The pattern is something happens that triggers emotional eating, okay? So something happens that triggers the emotional eating, okay? So you've already labeled yourself, oh my God, I'm an emotional eater. Like, I just can't lose weight, okay? And actually what hap has actually happened is something has triggered in your life or in your day that says, I'm an emotional eater, I can't lose weight. If that's been you, just comment and hit me below, okay? Where, where you've labeled yourself an emotional eater because something's happened in your day. And we're going to go on in the second half of this. I'm going to give you a really easy exercise to stop it and to fix it for good. Okay. Um, this is something that I do with my, in my revolution program. Okay. So this is a, a really hot tip. So if this is you, just comment me, say hi, because I'm not going, I'm not going anywhere without people interacting. So if you're watching this live, come and say hi, come and talk to me because I don't do just talking lives. So say hi, and drop, drop a comment. Cool. Kath says, I'm not an emotional eater. I'm just lazy, LOL. Okay, Kath, right there, you've done exactly the same thing as an emotional eater. What you've done is you've labeled yourself something um, and then that's your excuse now to not actually do the things that you know you want to do. Okay, same thing. Okay, hey, hey Mandy, how are you? Hope you bought me something back from your holidays because I saw that. Right, so here's the thing, ladies. I'm going to get you to write this down okay just write this one sentence down 
I am an emotional eater when whatever the event is happens. So, for example, I'm an emotional eater when I've had a stressful day at work. Okay? So just write that down. I'm an emotional eater when X event, whatever that might happen, happens to me in my day. Okay? So write that down. I'm an... Em <laughs> yes, fridge magnet, Mandy. Um, I'm an emotional eater. Hey, T. Hey, Teresa, how are you? I'm an emotional eater when this happens. So whatever that in thing is, whatever that, when your boss shouts at you, have an argument with the kids, whatever that is. Okay? When this happens in my day. Okay? So just write that down, ladies, and let me know when you're done. I'm going to give you a couple minutes. So write that down, ladies. So I think this is an important thing to really acknowledge. So let, just comment done when you're done. So write it down. I'm an emotional eater when X, whatever X is, happens in my day. So that time when you dive into chocolate, you dive into ice cream, you dive into all of these things, you know, when what normally happens to trigger that. So just comment down when you've written that down. Okay. All right, Mandy. So Mandy's driving. That's okay. Um, what I would say is just have the thought in your head about what that is. And then when you finish this, when you finish driving, go home and write this down. Do this exercise. Okay, cool. So whatever that incident is, okay, now just think back to the last time that it happened. Okay, so when was the last time that that event happened? Okay, now think back to that day. How did you feel about the incident that it happened? Okay, so for example... If you had an argument with the other half, okay, so Kath, this will work for boredom as well. I felt, and if the emotion is bored, frustrated, angry, whatever it is, write that emotion down that made you feel that way. So if it's boredom. It's going to be fun, ladies, it's going to be fun. So now next question, ladies. What made you feel the emotion that you've got above? What actually made you feel the emotion you've got above? So for example, if you were bored, like what made you feel bored? Like, let's be honest, we've got enough things to entertain us, right? If you felt frustrated, what made you feel frustrated? What was the thing that made you feel frustrated? Some deep levels, ladies, some deep levels. We're going for some deep psychology. So what was the thing that made you feel bored, frustrated, whatever that emotion was. Now, if anyone wants to share, feel free to share, because I think this will be an eye-opener for everybody. But I think this is important. Cool. All done? Just give me some love hearts if you've done it, ladies, if you're all done. Just hit, the, just hit the heart button so I know that you've all done. I've attached a meaning, which is that meaning that chocolate will make me feel better. Okay, got it. All right, so I'm going to use Kath, right? Because Kath has been up front and centre and put her name forward on this one. So this will work for, because it, boredom is an emotion, right? It's a feeling, okay? Um, so more often than not, the food becomes the outlet for whatever, Okay. But I'm going to ask Kath, and they'll use Kath's example because it's a concrete example we've got on this masterclass, right? And I'll ask Kath this. If you were bored, you knew you were bored. So, if you're bored, what could you be doing to stop the boredom? Okay? Because, ladies, here's the thing, right? All emotions and all these kind of feelings that we have and we developed are things that we can actually change and fix, right? So for example, if you were t really tired on the day when you last had an argument with your partner, for example, just giving an example, 
well, actually, if you take it back some more, is it that you didn't get enough sleep? And that's what led to the incident, which then led to the trigger of, oh, I'm angry, I'm going to go and eat chocolate. Were you anxious about something that made you think, uh oh, I feel really anxious about this because you're thinking what you think might happen. Therefore, the trigger was anxiety. So then you ate chocolate. OK, so one of the things I'm very keen to do with clients and Teresa will understand this is actually get to the root cause, because if you just keep labeling yourself a a whatever eater, a boredom eater, emotional eater, whatever that is then there's always a way to fix it. But what needs to happen in your brain is a little bit of, well, actually, let me understand the root cause, okay? What was the root cause of you feeling bored? So if boredom was the one that Kathy used, okay, I was bored, okay? So instead of being bored, what could I do? What could I do that I would actually enjoy, which means I don't have to eat, okay? Exactly, so Kath has just said, exercise, read a book, paint my nails, dance around the kitchen, watch a film, play a game, exactly. So then what you do is you learn to understand that you can swap whatever the emotional eating is with something else. Because once you know the trigger, once you know the trigger, ladies, you know what you can replace the boredom with, okay? Because the problem is when you try to just drop a habit, so emotional eating or eating chocolate in the evening for a lot of you, you don't replace it with anything, okay? Because actually, in nine times out of ten, this is what I actually find. Long day at work, work too hard, kill yourself at work, come home, kids, whatever, 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 have dinner with the kids, you, know, you go and sit down with the hubby. The trigger is that you're sitting watching a screen, which means you have to eat. So the trigger was actually TV, not actually your emotions, okay? The trigger was the TV. So now you notice the trigger of the TV, you can actually do something about it. You cannot watch TV. You can go and listen to a podcast. You can go and listen to a book. You can go for a walk now. It's quite warm outside. Okay. Now you know that there's actually options to stop the emotional eating. Because most of the time, it's actually not emotional eating. Most of the time, it's a trigger. You label it emotional eating, but actually there's a trigger that you can fix once you identify it. Ladies, does that make sense? Right, so Teresa's just nailed it. So, so to, see, Teresa's got a little bit of insider knowledge onto this stuff because Teresa's worked with me before, so she now understands what these things are. Um, and Teresa will happily let me say, I'm sure. Um, Teresa dropped 27 pounds working with me um, kind of last year into this year. So here's the thing. She said, usually I snack, etc. when I don't have enough sleep the night before. So one of the things we did with Teresa was we helped her fix her sleep, okay? We didn't focus on not snacking. We said, right, can we start getting your sleep sorted? Sleep sorted, now, she that, that incidence of snacking is less and less. Exactly, Kath, it's awareness of the trigger, not the habit, awareness of the trigger. Because if you focus on the habit, you'll just keep doing it. But if you learn to focus on the trigger, so the, the thing that pulls the gun, pulls the trigger for the gun, okay? So arguments, not enough sleep, um, not actually planning out your evening. This is a real big one, actually. Just had a I had a coaching call with a one-to-one -one client today. And we actually spent the call talking about how she could structure her evening so she wasn't sat on the TV because the TV is the trigger for the habit, Okay. So we're not trying to stop the habit, we're trying to stop the trigger first, then it changes the habit. Does that make sense, ladies? If we change the trigger, the habit changes, okay? So for example, if you're the sort of person who watches TV late at night, and sit around, if, if I came to your house and said, we're gonna go for a walk, then guess what? The habit just disappears. The emotional eating habit then disappears, okay? So, Really want you to just focus on understanding what your triggers are, okay, before actually trying to stop the habit. Because that's where most people go wrong. They actually struggle to fix the habit and beat themselves up because they don't actually understand what the trigger is. So unless you do this kind of reverse engineering, then nothing changes. And then you get frustrated. 
then you call yourself an emotional eater who can't lose weight. And it's really, really frustrating. Ladies, does that make sense? Comment sense so I know below. Just comment sense, make sure I know. And there's one more thing that you can do. If you, if you, if you ladies let me know that I'm talking sense, then I'll share the next bit of the process with you all, okay? So just drop a comment, let me know I'm making sense. Cool, all right, so the next bit, and this is a bit that um, we won't go into too much detail. Exactly, there you go, Kath, there you go, Kath, perfect. So, here's the next bit. Okay, the biggest thing that I think a lot of ladies struggle with, and I can't really go into it all now because we've only got about 10 minutes left, and this is a whole section in my program, right, of when I'm working with you that we work on because I think this stuff is important, okay? One of the... Teresa knows I'm talking sense. <laughs> um, one of the things that we did, and Teresa will, will, will attest to this, is actually going through your values. Like, what do you really care about? One of the challenges I think for a lot of ladies that I work with is they don't actually understand A, what they value, and then B, where they fit into those values. And what I mean by this is your identity is, I'm a mum, I must do everything for my children, I don't have any time to do anything for me, okay? So one of the exercises I take people through is a value setting exercise, um, and we go through exactly what your values are. And there's a real, it's, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to really go through, maybe 30 minutes, it takes a while to get through. You need to be asked the right questions because you start off with your, your top 30 values, so the things you value. They might be peace, that might be love, that might be um, strength, okay? Whatever those things are, okay? And then you whittle it down to your top eight, okay? So when you go through the process, you start at 30, and you whittle it down, whittle it down, and you whittle it down to eight, okay? And then you get to your top eight values, the things that you say that you care about the most, okay? Now, here's the thing, and if you don't have the questions answered properly, um, then, and you don't know how to answer those, then you're gonna struggle. But the last thing that really helps ladies beat emotional eating is understand where they fit in this in this value because if you don't understand where you fit in in your list of values then how will you ever change how will you ever eat right exercise etc 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 um so that's a really big thing ladies like if you don't value you nothing's going to change okay once you understand that you have to be one of the most important people in your own world to you understand that nothing's going to change However, you need to have the full picture of your values because if you don't have that, you won't know where you're going to. Am I making sense, ladies? Okay, so just just comment, let me know. I'm making sense. So yeah, I'm just about to, um, well, in an hour's time, I've got a, a gut health masterclass for my revolution clients, which should be fun. Um, oh, should be fun. So, two parts to stopping emotional eating for good. All right. Hey, Bridget. So, number one, we've already been through, which is the um, the really big part about understanding the trigger, not the habit. Okay. Everyone's so focused on on work stopping the habit, but if you understand what the triggers are. Yeah, and you do a whole process of reverse engineering when this happens, you can stop the bad habit, as it were, okay? And once you realize that it's about the triggers, not necessarily the habit, you can stop labeling yourself as emotional eater, number one. Number two, you need to do a values exercise and understand exactly where you fit in the hierarchy of your values, okay? Those are the most important things. Those are the two bits that we've gone through tonight. 
Um, of course, like, if you start understanding your value, understand root cause analysis, because the root cause bit, you can do that with everything. You can do it with nutrition, you can do it with exercise, you can do it with so many things, okay? But once you understand all of those things, that's when you'll start losing the weight and you can drop the 20 pounds like a lot of my clients do, okay? So that's part of the program. Like part of the program is we walk through all of those things at an individual level, um, so that you can understand it for yourself and talk it through and understand it, okay? Because the body won't change without the brain changing too. So you have to change the brain to get the body, okay? You can't have the body without the brain. It doesn't happen. You'll do every diet under the sun and never get results, okay? So that's number one. So we do the values exercise. We do the root cause analysis exercise. And the root cause thing, we work through that week by week to make sure that you stay on track and you can understand why you do certain things. Do that, and then you can drop the 90 pounds, uh, sorry, drop the 20 pounds in, you know, in around 90 days. Some people it happens 15 pounds, 17 pounds, hey, everyone's different, right? But you should see a significant change in your body, your mind, relationships, and just get the weight loss that you want, okay? So ladies, I hope that makes sense. Hope, that's, hope that will help someone today. Um, if you watch this on the replay, hit replay. If you're someone who watches this back and says, do you know what, I need to understand a bit more about this stuff, just drop me a message. Um, we'll have a chat and I'll ask you a few questions and see if I can help you. Um, so yeah, so I'll be doing these Master Masters every Monday. Um, I'll announce it in the group. Um, so yeah, you just need to comment and let me know what you want and what you need. And we'll cover that stuff. All right. So, ladies, I hope that was useful. Just drop a mess. Just drop a comment. Let me know this was great, and I'll see you on the next time. Talk soon. I've done there.